<laughs> Tony? Ready. We're ready? Sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for July 24th. Let's start with Chief Freitzel leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief. Okay, so um, first thing we'll mention is that uh, Chairman Lemire is on vacation, so that's an excused absence, of course. And... Um, Selectman Bork is, uh, has a work commitment, so he will not be able to make it. So tonight, there's three of us. Um, first item on the agenda is a review and approval of items for consent. We have July 10th meeting minutes. We have the accounts payable manifest for 718 of 109764 and 97 cents, and then for 725 of 31,422 and 13 cents. We have a payroll manifest for 720 of 51,125 and 52 cents and for 727 of 48,558 and 70 cents. We also have the treasurer the treasurer's reconciliation for June, the town clerk's resident reconciliation for June, the in one intent to cut, a building system trans trust fund expenditure and an Acting police captain temporary wage. Does anybody have any items they wish to remove? Hearing none. Does anybody want to make a motion? I make a motion. We approve this red. Second. I have a motion by Selectman uh, Brunel and uh, seconded by Selectman Schaefer. We'll call us to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstain. Excellent. Um, public input will occur no earlier than 6.15. Is there any other items or business that anybody has to add to the agenda? No. Hearing none, we will move on. First <coughs> item in the business section is Jonathan Hale, the fire station project. Hello again. How are we doing? Good. So I'm here just to give everybody a heads up and see where we're at. Um, the last time we met, which was about a month ago, I was charged with going back and um, reviewing the site concept as it relates to the fire station that was previously designed and how it might be might, how it might accommodate a police station um, on the same parcel. And I do believe that you all got a copy of the site plan that I sent around um, a couple of weeks ago, um, and. What I'm showing here is uh, actually a reconfiguration of the, the site concept that was previously done in 2008, um, um, showing the five bay fire station and how it would connect to um, the police station if it were to become a public safety complex. Um, in the lower left-hand corner, um, I'm, I'm actually, the bigger plan actually shows the, the build out if both facilities were located in the same location. The bottom left-hand side is showing what would be the scope of work that would be associated with just the fire station. So you can see as you travel, um, basically the site um, lays out on a, on a clockwise. You come in, um, you're allowed public parking along the front, which would have access to the police station, uh, the fire station, or the police station. Um, we would have signage here that would be um, do not enter or staff only, which would allow for parking for police vehicles off to one side, a sally port um, entrance, basically a non-public side of the building where you might have apparatus that are, that are left out. You'd have access to the sally port for the police department. You'd have um, the impound, a fenced impound area in the back, sort of the the private space and again um, allowing all emergency vehicles to come in on the public side but exit 
always on to directly onto Albuquerque, either bypassing the fire station or, or the drive through of the fire station. So from a, from a diagram, I think that the public, it, this concept of an L-shaped building allows for uh, the future design, if you will, of the police station to be attached to the fire station as it's presently configured. I do think that um, in making that connection, as I said last week, um, that we could make some modifications inside of the building um, should the fire station get approved next year to accommodate so that we're not redoing things twice, if you will, when the police station comes along. And I don't know, again, I don't know the status of, um, we kind of called it a public safety building, but um, initially we were hired to do the fire station. So I don't know if it's become a public safety complex or it's still a fire station today and a police station five years from now. I think as we told you when you left here the last time is that it's still a fire station with the ability to add on a police station. Make sure that we have that ability to do it so that as we take in all the information, we have the ability to do it at some point in time, whether it be right away or down the road. Yeah. So I think that um, this has been shared with um, the police department through Troy. Um, this is showing total build out in terms of parking, connecting to the parking lots of the town hall. I, I think that um, conceptually it works and I think it's been vetted now both by police and fire and, and Troy. So that, that being done, that being said, that's great. As I said last time we met, I was based on this plan was gonna reach out and um, attempt to get a couple of civil engineering proposals to bring this to a point where we would have an approved site plan by late fall. And I think you should have gotten two proposals, one from SFC and one from CMA. Um, SFC did the proposal back in, uh, actually a full civil engineering package back in 2004 when we were on a different parcel. CMA was brought in, um, uh, quite frankly, I don't know why there was a change, but CMA was brought in and did the initial concept for this parcel in 2008. So I, I got proposals from the two. Um, um, if you look at the design numbers, um, they're within a couple thousand dollars of each other. Um, I did have a conversation with both SFC and CMA, and, and I've worked with both of them for a lot of years. Uh, I don't have a preference one way or the other. Um, both of them are extremely busy, as is every civil engineer that I know. Um, um, and I don't know if you have a relationship with either or in terms of have they done other work for you and have a preference? Um, um. I couldn't name it. What, what is the pro I couldn't quite understand the, the difference in the pricing. The, F the SFC proposal, I just saw 42450 So the And then CMA, I, you know, I just, I added up. Um, well, in their proposal, they actually talk about phase two and they, in text, they say 20,000, but then in their detail, it's 17,000. Um, so I had a sticky here. So the, the difference is um, in terms of the design phase that would bring us to a point of having full site plan approval with the planning board, with the state, having a package that we could then put out to bid. Okay. CMA's number was 45,000. Um, and SFC's number was forty thousand fifty dollars. Okay, so, so that's the first phase. About forty nine hundred dollar difference. Um, the thing that I that I realized this afternoon, and I couldn't get a hold of either one of them, is I do think that SFC carried um, the cost of a backhoe to do the test pits for the septic, where CMA didn't. CMA said, in there is they're just assuming the town would bring something over from Public Works and dig a hole. So, quite frankly, I look at this, they're the same number. I mean, it's, it's more of an issue of who can do it in the time frame and whether or not you have a relationship and have a choice one way or the other. Um, but as I said, <coughs> Troy, I'm, I'm more interested in, in um, making this work. So, I mean, I've been working without a contract. I'm looking to put this in place and get them started. Um, I've told them that uh, our, our goal here is this is the site plan and we want to be fully vetted and, 
and permitted by November. Um, and that's the premise that they did the proposal on. So do you foresee any problems if you went with um, SFC um, where they didn't do the original site plan here, trying to get that the data and from CMA? They did the 04, didn't they? They did the one before. Yeah. Both yeah. have done. Both, both have, have done. done, but yeah. CMA did the site plan. The concept plan this. for here. Yes. Concept. They didn't do the full civil. The, the full civil engineering was never done oh, okay. for this site. I'm sorry. All right. It was just a concept plan. Um, the topography was already done there. That file exists. Um, so they're both starting from scratch. There's something that's driving me nuts in this design. We talked about this the last time, um, the indentation of the last three bays. Didn't we discuss that we were going to just try to maximize our space without having the, the bump-ins? I, I know Steve brought it up. Um, I had asked why. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's an architectural thing more than anything, isn't it? I it's mean, an aesthetic we, issue. Um, yeah. And I do think that there is, um, and again, this, um, I'd have to sit down and go through with Frank. The equipment that was listed when we did this 10 years ago mm -hmm. may or may not be the same. So they were late. It would, there were two bays that were longer because they had stacked equipment. Um, right. That may have changed, and we can go back and forth. Um, I, I would just caution you. I, I hate to see a shed roof drop snow on an overhead door. I mean, that's what we have here. Um, if you look at the, at the elevations, um, you know, at least the first three, which were previously going to be phase one, and they'd have the ability to add the two bays down the road, that that was a gable end, if you will. Um, so the next two bays shed, you know, shed to the overhead door. Oh, okay, all right. So um, That being said, if you don't have an issue, I'd like to just bet that we have apples to apples numbers. Um, and because um, both of these came in on Friday, and honestly, I, other than reading them, I haven't had a chance to, um, to go back to them. I just want to make sure they're apples to apples. And if you don't have an issue, I'll, I'll talk through with Troy, who's available and who's got the commitment, and we'll get one of the two of them started. It's going to be the commit, you know. It may not be price. It may be their firm commitment to the time, time to the line. time frame. Yep. Well, like I said, the price is similar. So you take out the stuff they don't need, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I can deal with that. Um, the second component that um, we had discussed last time was actually reaching out and bringing on board a construction manager, and I did put together an RFQ, if you will, for a CM. Um, for your comment. I know Frank sent me um, some things that I'll, changes that I'll incorporate. I randomly pick some dates in terms of that I can review again with, with Troy. But what I'd like to do is, is um, so with the municipal projects that, that, that um, we're involved with, we like to do a qualification based selection, but we ask for an envelope on the second side for for fees and um, a uh, I can do a select list or I can do an open public list to everybody and his brother you guys got to give me some feedback as to how you want me to go about it I can I can give you a list of six to eight construction managers that um, have done fire stations in the past I'm not sure that that's an absolute requirement but um, you know some fire departments want to see you know their station built by somebody that's already built a station um, I will tell you that if I give you a list of eight maybe four will respond because They're everybody is so busy that um, it's just an issue you know and especially where I'm asking for so in that envelope I'm asking for their fee which will be three four five percent and their general conditions and overhead which would be based on, I'm going to give them a budget for the project and a duration. I think this thing can be built in 10 months. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to tell you what does it cost to have a super and their general conditions to build this over 10 months. 
and typically we've done this half a dozen times in the last six months for housing projects that go like through New Hampshire Housing Finance or, or in the end when you take their fee and, and you add it to the general conditions overhead and profit, they're literally within a couple thousand dollars of each other. So that's why it's really important when you do the qualifications that we talk about who it is that you want to work with, you know, in terms of their abilities, their reputation, the super they're going to have, those kinds of things, that the dollars ultimately end up being a wash. It just hap it's just, they know what it costs them to build this, so. Um, <clears throat> so this is prepared, m subject to comment from the town. Um, I can post this, I can have a construction manager on board by the middle of September in about six weeks by the time I put it out, advertise it, have them come and have a meeting and then get proposals in hand, bring those proposals back to you. Um, I schedule it so I'd have them on the 14th and you meet the third Tuesday so um, I could review that with the selectmen. We could choose somebody. At that point, um, um, if I get the civil engineering started, eight weeks from now I'm hoping to have plans into boards for review and, and comment, which are typically uh, far enough along to actually start some civil pricing. Um, and the goal is to have uh, you know, a guaranteed maximum price uh, to build this thing, the fire station, all the site work, by early end of November, early December for your bond hearings and, and where you go from there. Um, Sounds oh. great. Yeah. Is there going to be a state, a state permit, right? Is this going to there is trigger an the state permitting process, just the square footage that we're disturbing? Uh, it's very close with just the fire station. And so um, that was my next question. So um, one I'm looking for, before we jump to that, I'm, I'm looking for feedback or approval that I can note, I, I either file this in a newspaper with a public notice or we do a select list, I get six or eight um, contractors to Troy to review. We agree that that's the list. We do a select list. Um, we invite them and, and, and I handle the whole thing. All right, so let's go with that. What would you prefer? The select list. Select list, yeah. select yeah. list. I'm on board too, so we'll definitely go that way. We'll go that route. Do we want a motion for that? Um, I mean, if you just want to reference the uh, the um, RFQ that that we've put together, request for proposal, um, the criteria that it'll be a select list, um, and allow Troy and I to work out the details, um, we can move forward in that direction. So moved. <laughs> you said the motion. I'll <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> second it. <laughs> Motion by Selectman Brunel, second by Selectman Schaefer. Any discussion? I, I think it only makes sense to use a select list. You know these people. Right. You know the project going forward. I think it only makes sense for you to reach out to the people you've worked with before. And we're on a tight schedule, too, so it's good. Yep. Right. Um, in the same token, um, do we need a motion for us to move forward? Well, I guess not. All right, I'll call I this can... one to a vote for us. So, no discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstain. <clears throat> Motion carries 3 zero, zero. Um, I'll ask Troy, are we free to work out a contract? I mean, I'm just going to roll this into mine, so. Right. Okay, so we're good. So, um, the next question here is, um, as we move forward here, um, the way the state law reads is that if you intend to modify a parcel within a 10-year window and it is greater than two acres, it triggers the AOT. Phase one of just the fire station is probably right on the cusp of whether it needs an AOT or not. Um, typically, we can massage the numbers to make it not. But if you come back and tell me in February, we're going to go with public safety complex. I need to know, am I designing this whole site? Or am I designing just phase one? I say whole site. Yeah, yeah I would too. But 
what's what's the hurdle with the state? How long does that take? In a in a ten year window. So if yeah, if okay. you if we build this, permit this, build this, mm -hmm. and two years from now you decide we're gonna, even though the site's there and you just have to drop the police station on it, mm -hmm. you have to go back to the state and get it. You have to pull an AOT permit. So you're gonna go through that rigorous review with the state. In one in one time or another, right? Mm -hmm. If we do it now, or wait later. In a ten year window. It's gonna, yeah, everything's gonna if, come if together. You, what's the time frame for it? Like when you, if we were gonna pull it now, would that delay the project as you're scoping it out? Pull what? The AOT permit. If we oh, it'll be part of the permitting process. So two months from now when the civil gets the package, you're gonna send one to the, city, the town mm -hmm. and we'll send one to the state. It'll be concurrent. Okay. And, and you know, we're doing a courtesy review with the planning board. Mm -hmm. Typically you would get a conditional approval that state permits come in, the AOT comes in and you have to address those those issues. So, what's what's the shelf life of the AOT permit? Ten years? No, your planning board. It's dictated on planning board approval. So your planning board approval is only good for. Well, I don't know. We'd have to touch base. But in some towns, it's one year, and some towns it's two years. Uh, it's for the planning board. I thought it was more than two years. I I'm just was, I'm uh, just curious if we yeah, if we go through that permitting five. process, are we wasting money if if we don't disturb the site within 10 well, years. I'm just saying, is that state permit going to expire? It's, or is it, it's, it's no, linked? The state, that, that state permit will not expire. What will happen is if we design the whole thing and worst case scenario, it doesn't pass a town meeting, you know, you keep doing this. The ability is that you're, you've got a fully engineered, fully engineered site that we don't have now. Hmm. You just keep going because it's the municipality and you're not, not asking for permits. You're basically asking yourself in a courtesy review you're just going to keep taking the plan back to the planning board and said we're going to move forward okay um mm -hmm. uh, i mean because it's the town we don't even have to go to the planning board. <clears throat> no you don't um so to that end um i don't know if you have a third party engineer that typically does plan reviews for the planning board who is that next um lou karen well we have so we have um, a member from the Natural Regional Planning Commission, but I also believe we have a contracted engineer, Lou Karen, right. who reviews so my, site plans as well. So my question is, will he review this on? on he will for a fee and provide input. You but know. Does, will the town want someone to review this before it actually goes forward? I, the only reason I ask is that I have I to mean, ask the plan board if they could waive it. All right, so not to say that you're not capable of your job, but why wouldn't we have him review it? Why? It's it has a PE stamp on it. I bring it to the planning. You know, there's a review, and you know I, we don't have the staff to do it, so we send it out. Whether it's Keach Nordstrom or you yep. know all yep. these different firms that do the third party review, you know they go out, they come back with comments and questions, and we have to you know dot the i's and cross the t's and do that submittal process where the towns designing their own site i don't know if you would have the town engineer look at it or if you're going to have luke Karen. i'm just trying in process it's, knowing in, in, the, i've done this in other i've done this in other towns i i don't think we're talking about a lot of money right. a lot of times a lot of good comes out of uh, I'm sticking not, to that planning board process that you get some Think some good discussions, some yeah, things absolutely. that are pointed out. Um, it's just more process for me. I'm it, just it trying is, to yeah. anticipate. I, I would say plan on him looking at it. But does the AOT include like the parking lot and everything? I mean, that's the whole site, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So whether you have a police station there or not, the AOT applies to the whole shingle. That's right. But structure. My, my, I guess my question came from. If we were doing just the fire station, yep. that's the diagram we're, we're going to build and permit today. But you're, but you're, that's that's still pretty close to the same area you have in the big picture, though. Well, minus all of all of this parking, all of this parking. But that's still going to be disturbed, though, because you're building a road driving right by it. So that is it within the parameter, or is it no, the actual disturbance? Disturbs? It's disturbed. Okay. So. Um, that's why you can manipulate the numbers a little bit. That's I mean, we're going to permit this whole piece 
I understand. Um, and that's what the fees are based on. So we'll move forward with that, with the expectation that somebody's going to do a third party review of something down the road. What, what exactly is, what is the AOT for those, for the benefit of people listening? It's called the alteration of terrain permit. It's, it's a process, it's a permitting process that you have to do with state oversight for uh, a land development greater than two acres. So if you affect a parcel greater than two acres, the state wants to know about it. You know, and it's about stormwater runoff and wetlands impact and all of those things. On a smaller development, a smaller parcel, typically they leave it to the municipalities and the locals to review and um, but the state deems a two acre parcel to be big enough for them to want to be noticed of it and want to have some input all right um, so civil <laughs> um, construction managers I'll move forward I'll work with Troy to put together a contract for our scope of work including the civil and the rest of it um, the final issue I just want to bring to everybody's attention the so this set of drawings that we're using is is complete enough I say complete enough it is complete um, and it and we are capable of getting of bidding this with construction managers for a GMP at the end of the year the dilemma I have is that two of the subs that um, were engineers on this parcel have either retired or gone out of business. Um, Bob Brecknock with SWNC Structural has retired and is not doing any more work. Um, so if we want to do, you know, effectively I don't have, there's no insurance because his business doesn't exist anymore. Um, and I can't do any changes with him. I mean, um, I'm not sure what to do at, with that. Mechanically, Yetin is still in practice, but he only did mechanical. Um, I can handle that. Electrical, Bry Hope Associates um, is still doing a little bit of work, but moved to Florida. So, um, and he's let his New Hampshire PE stamp go. <laughs> so, um, I don't have electrical, and I don't have structural. Um, so as I said before, I'm more interested in getting you to a point where we have a GMP, we get approvals um, with the town, we bring this before the voters in March, we know what it's going to cost, and you roll some money into addressing the changes that might or need to take place after the fact. I would like the opportunity to go back to Yetin and say, um, here are the electrical drawings that were done. If you could do a review of that, I'll pay you to stamp that engineering after you've done the review can we work something out I've done a lot of work with with Wayne over the years and um, but I'm not quite sure what to do with the structural component um, so the issue that we have is that we're talking about flipping the inside of the fire station correct um, and the fact that you have contracts that are no longer in business yeah right yeah so those plans are kind of useless at this point no no no, no 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 don't say that oh. no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> there's a lot of value here. I mean, you, you paid over $100,000 in 2008 to put this package together. Right. Um, I'm just trying to get you to a point where you don't have to do that yet again to get to that same point you were in 2008. There's enough here to work with a construction manager to put the budget together for the Warren article to move it forward. And all I'm saying is whatever modifications in terms of flipping the building, mirroring the building, um, I can handle all of that in, in CAD, but that design exercise, Troy and I can work out, we, we allot some small amount of money to cover that after the Warren article passes. How much do you think that would cost? Uh, I haven't given it uh, zero thought, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I would like to sit with my staff and say, you know, what is involved? The only reason I ask is because in some of the discussions that Troy and I have had, is the value of showing the voter exactly what they're going to get. If I've already done that. I understand, but if the building's going to be opposite. I've already done that. I've already flipped it. You've already flipped oh, it. Okay. Oh, you are. So, You're there. So we could, okay. uh, my point was, for, as you start the, having, you for, we start having slideshows of, it. no, but the well, interior I've, walls, are, you, are we able to show, here's where the training room will be, here's a shared bathroom, yeah, shared so kitchen area. Yeah, so if you actually area. look at this graphic, 
this graphic has the fire station flipped with the CAD plane. I mean, it's very small, but graphically, it. yeah, it's see there. The lines inside. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. We've we have flipped it. I haven't made the changes where the training room might move, you know, a little more central to be accessible from the police department. Those kinds of changes. The, uh, I'm not I think that's what to, Steve's asking, though, so that we would can, have we can do all of that. a visual. It, yeah, I can. You, graphically, for the Warren article, I can give them pretty pictures, elevations, floor plans, not an issue. The other issue, and I'll just say this for your own reference, is um, our office made a transition to what they call Revit three years ago. AutoCAD is not being supported Autodesk doesn't support AutoCAD. I mean, it, the, we still have the programs, mm -hmm. but we don't draw in that program anymore. Um, and you can't bring AutoCAD into Revit. I can convert Revit to an old AutoCAD file. So this is drawn in um, software that <laughs> I have staff that has never even drawn in before. So it's not without its challenges. But I'm still convinced that there's value here that I can make work for Troy to save the town a considerable amount of money moving forward. We just want to get the word out. You know, ultimately here, the, the goal is to get the voters to acknowledge the need and fund the building. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. So we'll have back, we'll have drawings and things to show people when Absolutely. pictures and yep. everything, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll have, um, you know, subject to Troy and I working on an agreement, I can have elevations of the building you have you have the concept site plan I have things that we could start um, sharing with mm -hmm. um, the town in a couple of weeks mm. have we um, started the ball rolling with the um, police department survey yet uh, Ben's been handling that have you been yes sir uh, he was able to uh, accomplish what we were looking to do with the board through uh, in that uh, dollar amount okay. and I'm waiting I should hear something back uh, tomorrow or Wednesday as to when they'll, they'll come out and start the assessment. Cool. Okay. That's good. Very good. So what else do you need from us? Nothing. Nothing? Nope. Nothing at all. Can I ask you a question? Sure. The dotted lines on the bottom say the back corner behind the police station. Dotted lines. Uh, I'm going to say that that's the storage area. It's a fenced-in security area. What's the approximate width that you have going through there? And is that the best place for that only because the fire trucks will always be going through? Are you talking this impound area? Yes. Here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, is it the... Um... I'm not trying to question what you're doing. I'm just asking a question. I sit on the planning board. I see a lot of things, and sometimes things look tight. Yeah. And I would hate to maybe make things tight from the start. Could we encroach further on the property line then? Pull it closer, in, closer to the property? Yeah, expand the asphalt. Yeah, I mean, I they needed to have it, it wherever they do, wherever they put it, it's got to be close proximity to the police department. At the beginning. No, I understand that. I just, with the trucks passing through there, oh, yeah. today we may have trucks that would go through there no problem. I just don't want it to end up being so an issue. So if we moved it like six feet or something, that What's might. Curve? Well, that, that, that turning curve? radius will accommodate the largest tractor trailer you can possible i forget what it was it, okay um, it's a 65 foot radius so it's it's um yeah okay yeah because i I'm, only asked because on the plan it looks like it might be a little tight mm -hmm. well, how, i guess the reference how, how deep is that park the the driveway to the sally port is that a car deep when i look at the yes you could stack you could stack two cars in front of that garage cars side by side right how about as far as deep from uh Front of the Sally Port to the parking lot. It's 20, 20. Well, it's 20 on the short side and probably closer to That's 28, 30 okay. feet. Yeah. Um, okay. And there is the opportunity, I mean, in this plan, and I, I didn't show it, that if the Sally Port wanted to be a drive through where, you know, it could actually, you could actually turn it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Drive through is safe too. And, and this is this is your concept. Once you get the civil engineer <clears> on board, you know things could change. Like for example, that detention pond. You're not even be there, right? You know, you know, if you're working with the engineers and stuff, is the way to get that 
Yeah, out they're going to finesse from an That's engineering standpoint. I look, I'm like, you know, if we can get that detention pond somewhere else, it just looks like valuable real estate right there. Isn't the detention pond today up in the front by Hillcrest? There is one here in front of our. So what? So I don't office. see it there. So, so you know, if it's a culvert there. underneath Liberty Way, let's put the culvert in. But that's yeah. a discussion with oh, the civil engineer. Those are engineering discussion. I mean, yeah. in concept, you know, you're going to end up. You know, you're going to have some kind of swales. You're going to have a, a pond. Right. Um, whether it's retention or detention. I'll be honest. The leach field up front. I, I was actually surprised that that was the only one, and that it can be that far back. Right. I was actually surprised at that. The, well. The, when we do site plans like it's this, you you're going to have a couple of catch basins and pipe. Yep. So, I mean, right. we've put detention ponds, you know, 300 feet away, just and yeah, pipes to it. Forest and behind us, right back there. Yeah. 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 Can you square it up and call it detention pond backslash ice skating rink? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some rec cool. rec splash pad. Splash pad. Splash pad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you'd need nothing from us, and other than the 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 okay to. To charge ahead. Yep. And I'll do that with, with Troy and um, keep the chiefs involved. What is the approximate square footage of the police station that you put on that plan? Roughly 8,000 square feet. Conceptually, it can get wider, it can get longer. Um, what it can't do is, um, you know, if the study that they're hiring to do comes back and says it's a 15 or 20,000 and I'm 30 days into the civil engineer and you go time out, you know, the, the anticipation of the, the, the police component and something else is gonna be much bigger and it doesn't work in this configuration. What size um, are we working with now? 3,000? We're at about 3,500. Yeah. Think. So this is two and a half times what you have today and... Um, God, I would hope that works. Mm -hmm. If, well, as an architect, if if for some reason you, could you started going down that path, what's to prevent you from going up one story? Dollars. Dollars, but I mean, Dollars. You, could, you could go up. the second floor means an elevator yeah. and two stairs. You just added $200,000 mm -hmm. um, to the budget. Um, and there's a programmatic issue with separating you know, spaces on two different floors. What is public and what isn't public and how do I move people around and um, stairwells are a mess. And, cool. and, and I think it bears, it's 8,000, give or take, but that doesn't include the, the training community, conference rooms. Right, yeah, you're gonna have some shared, some shared, shared spaces that are. So that is gonna make it a little bigger or de deduct from what their their analysis may you know may say you need if you had storage in the basement if you did a basement to that do you have to have an elevator still really it becomes an employment ada issue okay because no matter where you put stuff you know you have to have an employment policy where um i'm in a wheelchair i can't go downstairs you know my co-workers gotta go get it for me um in a municipal public building it's really tough to argue you didn't put an elevator in because of dollars. You know, you spend six, seven, eight million dollars, whatever it is. Right, and, right. Um, Here's a stupid question. Is a basement elevator the same price as a? Yeah, two oh, stop yeah. is I didn't know stop. if this was like a, you know, yeah, it, it, cargo, it's almost, it's almost at that point, you might as well make two floors utility. in a basement. Right. Yeah, I know exactly. Right, yeah, if you're gonna do two floors, you may as well put the basement because yeah. the bulk of your cost is there. What yeah. if that was the thought and why this one never get a basement? Hmm. All right, so, um, but you said that the police station could be pushed out a little bit if it needed oh, it to be a be little pushed, bit. Oh, it can be pushed, it can be tweaked, it can, you know, there's, there's, as long as conceptually the police department agrees that, you know, there's a, pub, there's a public side, there's a private side, there's a front door, there's a back door, there's a sally port, there's, you know, the, the elements that they're looking for that touch the site plan, I think that there's modifications that you can make down the road. Um, a question for you is, we're going to permit this entire build out. Mm -hmm. um, from a site standpoint, all I need is this driveway that gets me to the back of, of the five 
bays, if you will, and an apron to get out. And I've got some parking that, you know, is associated with the fire department. Um, when we get to a GMP at the end of the year, are you looking for the contractor today to build out the entire site plan? You probably more than double the cost of the site. I wouldn't pave the parking lots because they're just they, they could be damaged during construction. No, I mean short of that. But is your expectation that this will all be built out except for the blue police building in the middle? I would say no. I would say we would only build what we would need, and then add to it after. And we would do the other all together when we do a police station. Yeah. So that as the need. As the police station gets the police station, they get their parking, they get their impound lot, they get those things that go along with it. I mean, this, I don't know if it would be too far now, but like the impound lot, how we say it has to be in proximity, close proximity to the police station. I mean, I don't know if doing an area like that right now might help alleviate space issues they have currently. Yeah. And I mean, that would be a minor modification to what you have. Yeah, that's yeah, correct. Right, yes, right. I mean, I could see us doing that, but aside from that, I don't think we need to have enough parking for 150 vehicles for a fire station. Yeah. Okay. Full timers. No. <laughs> I got a question though. The um, when you added, like, you have the fire station by itself. And then you added the police station to it, and you have a little red block behind the police station connected to the fire station. Um, what is that? I'm just curious. It's the future, the future build out of the fire station. That's that's the future build out. So at, when if you go back to this plan here, the fire station actually had a, it had, the base plan which was three apparatus bays, future two additional bays, mm -hmm. and then it had a room in the back that was sleeping quarters for the fire station okay. if in the future it became a full-time station and, and a 24-7 man station. Why so, wouldn't that be added to the plans now? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just instead of making a future. The only reason I say this, every once in a while we have emergencies in town and we have people on full coverage. I mean, I don't know that people need to sleep, but when they're on coverage, but. So a, a room we could build out a room and use it as, and in that location, it could be a training room, it could be other. I would just caution the politics of, you know, selling this to the community is, um, see, they're going to get a fire station, and now the next issue is they're going to be a full-time fire station, and you're going to add six staff and full-time employees, and, right. you know, yeah. and All that's right. not. They wouldn't go for that, no. No, that's, and, that's, and that's not what we. That is valid, but it's also valid to think of the thought, if four years down the road, three years down the road, or eight years down the road, you yeah. say, okay, we're going to have to do full-time staff. And by the way, we got to throw $100,000 onto our new fire station to build out for it. Yeah. We could, I, I think we could I, build out the training, a training space that could be, could have a second use down the road as, as sleeping quarters. Yeah, if you were to build it out now, just not specifically as sleeping quarters. Exactly, yeah. So we, we were just trying to show the entire program, um, and that being a shared space, if you will. Okay. Just a thought. Yeah. And I think John, John raises a good point, and it really raises a good point, is that, you know, there, there is no current plan to increase staffing, increase the 24-hour coverage, or, or anything like that. That's not at all part of this project and really not on the radar. So I, I think right. it, that bears, you know, being made known public. Right. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Troy, I'll call you tomorrow. Good. Thank you, Chief. All right, thanks. Thank so. you guys. Not a marathon night. <laughs> Hi, Chief. I'm just saying for backup. I love working with you. Okay.
Next item on the agenda is additional highway block grant funds. That's still not official yet, right? It's not a. It's not official, however. Um, everything indicates this. I mean, the law passed. I mean, the, this this Friday uh, we should if, we should be learning what the dollar amount is for the town. Um, some of the material that I've read is, you know, the checks could actually be in the mail uh, this coming Friday. But at the very least, I would expect to receive some type of notification from New Hampshire DOT um, indicating the dollar amount. Right now, we're, we're uh, led to believe that we should be receiving uh, the same amount uh, of funding that we received last year for highway block funds. And we had budgeted about $201,000. Jack has been working with Continental Paving uh, to plan on this on these funds, and what he's recommending is that we uh, finish the Page Road project where he left off this spring at 99 Page Road, and we go all the way to 3A. So there'll be some sections there that we're going to grind, and there'll be se sections where we just do an overlay. That's almost exactly one mile of section of roadway that we're talking about, and then. There's a section of Albuquerque in the north end um, starting at, um, I don't know if I get them backwards here or not, but Griffin Lane uh, down to April Drive. And again, we'd be doing some areas, we'd be do grinding, and then we'd just be doing the overlay. Did a lot of patching there. This That's last year. where we did some patching last year. And Good. if you're up there really close to it, you can see that it's, it's in this, there's, there's sections that are in a state of failure because of, you know, you can see the, the wheel rails are starting to sag and you've got the alligator cracking. Um, so that's our plan and hopefully uh, if we have enough funds left, Cardinal Lane is another road. Maybe a lot of you are not that familiar with it. It's, it's, it runs parallel to Albuquerque down by the height and it's in really bad shape. You're familiar with it? Yeah. So we're hoping that we could try to squeeze that in too, but we're still working on pricing for that. We don't know how much we're getting. Right, so I just, we, because if this money comes, you know, we're gonna move pr pretty fast. We wanna try to get these projects done this year. So once we receive notification of the dollar amount, I'll place a uh, public hearing in the newspapers and our first meeting in August, hopefully we'll be able to uh, hold the public hearing and the board can, uh, you know, approve um, the plan. So we just wanted to kind of break the ice, let you know what we're thinking about here. And, How much um, do you think we're going to get? Everything I've read is, is you know, it's going to be somewhere between one ninety to 200000 It's a good fit. <laughs> and there's just the conditions are, I don't know what the exact conditions are, but they're very specific. They want these funds to go 100% into new roadway projects. Right, nothing that's, nothing that's going to subsidize your already, your, yeah, whatever you budget this year cannot be subsidized. Right. It has to go on future projects. Yeah. So we're basically getting next year's project. We, we are doing a, some heavy lifting here, what we were talking about planning on next year. Right. Um, also, it's come to my attention that we have an old special fund that's under the Board of Selectmen's control. And it's for Albuquerque. It's off-site improvements fund. And we have a balance of $12,051.94. So we've gone through the history of this fund um, and it went through different cycles, but eventually um, with some escrow accounts, some impact fees, at one point in time, they rolled all this money into a fund. They labeled it offsite improvements and the purpose of it was to uh, do work on Albuquerque. So now would be a perfect time uh, for the board to act on that and release the funds um, to do it with this project. You don't need, to you, don't need you don't, you could vote on it this evening or you can wait and see if we, um, how the funding comes out from the block grant. We can vote on that in August. An Albuquerque off site improvement fund. This thing's got history. It goes way back in the early eighties. Um, and then, like I said, towards the end, it looked like what the selectmen, the road agent did, they just took money from cleaning everything up from various projects and they put it all into a fund and it was earmarked um, for Albuquerque. 
the north the north section of Albuquerque. I just question the intent. I I think it was because because I don't know you know the history as well as you folks, but um, you know Albuquerque was being built in sections by contractors and different efforts, and so as every section got built, there was always a you know some mon funds laying around, and at some point in time, the project was done, and the selectmen uh, just consolidated everything into one fund, and they labeled it offsite improvements. Interesting. It's it's one of those things, you know. It's one of those funds laying around. It's in the town report, and it's just there until someday, uh, you know, we find a good opportunity to use it and close it out. You want to wait till we get the block grant and then lump it in there with that? That would be my recommendation. That way, then it can it can sit in my brain for a little while. I know you're gonna have some questions. <laughs> Off-site improvement thing. There'll be six more questions at least. <laughs> Where is that? Is that all with that? Yes. All right. Not to get off topic. Is this something that you wanted to do? I was just happy to make myself available in case there were any questions or whatnot. Otherwise, I was going to depart the fire chief, but I was just happy everything's going good on our end. But I just wanted to let you know that I was available here if you had any questions, concerns. We got in the building. No. No? Good. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that. No, nope, just in case any, if there any questions or whatnot, so that's it. Excellent, thank you. Right. Thank awesome. you, Thanks for coming by. How, thank you. How come the chief left town and then everything went crazy? See that? <laughs> that's my question. <laughs> it has gone nuts. Oh, it's gone nuts. Oh, it's a real test for him. He's had to look pretty well so far. Oh, yeah. He's got no hair. <laughs> oh, I see. He's tied with no hair. All right, so at this time, I'm going to open up public comment with no public in the room. I'm going to close public comment, and we will keep moving on capital improvement plan. All right. Um, I wanted to get, I want to have a discussion with the board about capital improvement plan. We, if you recall, last year we um, took some funds from our operating budget, and we paid uh, money to New Hampshire, New Hampshire, to the National Regional Planning Commission. To, assist us with a capital improvement plan and they've been working on it and they've gotten to a point where um, we need to start getting the forms out to all the department heads all the committees and and the school and starting you know to, to start receiving projects for the next seven years I it's really the the plan is outdated it needs it really needs to be um, put together and discussed and you know approved by the Board of Selectmen and I just I have a feeling that maybe in the past we've had a capital improvements committee, but yeah. I'm not so but sure. Didn't it get put on the ballot that we were going to form one? No, so we formed one, and then as we did through, we went through all the assets and figured it all out. We rolled it into the TA's role. Yeah. The committee was devolved. There you go. That, that's because I know yeah, that there was they, a Warren they, article. That was used to part of the plan. I think the, the Warren article was more about pulling away from the planning board at the town do their capital improvements. Mm -hmm. We did a committee first, went through the process. We could basically inventory a lot of stuff and talk to different department heads to figure out what the future needs were. And then we created a capital assets list. Mm -hmm. And we have a schedule of decommission and recommission. Right. And that was at that point in the TA's role to um, maintain with the department heads. Because that's the best place for it, other than some of these other unique projects. Yeah, I, I just that, that's where I wanted to make sure the board was um, comfortable with that process and that we don't need to go out and form a capital improvement committee, making up, you know, department heads, some committee members, and planning board members. It just, I really think that will slow the process down. You, I work with department heads, boards and committees, get the schedule, get it all together, and it will be this board which will review. You, you may decide to have a public hearing, encourage people to come in and provide input, and then uh, you can uh, adopt it, and we'll have a plan. I think the, um, the challenge I have, and Steve, you know more about this than probably I do, is the back feed into the planning board to make sure that our you know, other fees we collect. The impact fees. Are set right. appropriately for what the right programs are. And I don't know if we have that, that worked out. 
So they just did theirs, right? They just did theirs based on the, the old process? Uh, the planning board got this stripped away from them. So they didn't set any impact fees for anybody left the way it was. Right. Yeah, so I mean, I, the impact fees go through a process and they paid um, Bruce Mayberry to basically go through based off of the capital improvement okay. plan, which is the reason why you need one. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is we still don't use a capital improvement plan like we should. Mm -hmm. We should recognize the capital needs. We should start funds that can actually buy things. I mean... But wasn't it, that what the... Don't we have a capital reserve fund? I thought we created a capital reserve fund a few years ago that we wouldn't start populating money into for this. We have... You have some capital reserve funds. Um, yeah, I think that we was got the, the concept. We got expendable yeah. trust funds and capital reserves. So, um, you know, we just started one again this year for, uh, I think that was for the fire station, just for um, equipment repairs and replacement. But we don't have a fund established to um, actually start preparing to purchase new engines. Well, we, need don't, to we don't have one, I don't think, for highway equipment. No, we don't. But I thought the idea was the fire department was the first one. We knew we had something coming down the road. But we haven't funded it correctly. It, you're right. It's, it was put to help repair us, but it's also supposed to fund a new, essentially a new vehicle on the road. Right. Mm, no. The one, the one no. we did, we just because that's what I wanted, and we couldn't do it. Uh, our town oh, attorneys, out of the uh, our town attorneys, kept saying no. It had to be separate. Oh, it had to be separate funds. Yeah. So we didn't create the separate fund then. I thought we no. created one for the truck. No. Nope. So we that's we, we, we have the ability now to repair our emergency okay. equipment. I understood that then. And replace it if, if it fails, but it that, may have a value amount of cap on the replacement. But. Yeah, so we have to we, so we have to establish the capital reserve. Yeah. To me, I would establish one for the town and not categorize it, but and use that capital plan as a reason why we're funding it. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember back ten years ago on the planning board when we were going through a capital improvement plan that Pelham developed one, and they sent it to their voters. And it was a plan of like, we're gonna need this many police cars over the next 10 years. Like how many you need each year. We're gonna need this truck replaced, this fire engine replaced, this highway vehicle replaced. And they went to the voters asking like for 150 grand a year with like a 10 year time frame, just to put towards all of these things so that then when they could say, okay, we need a fire truck, you can say, well, we have half of the money here to put towards it so we only have to raise and appropriate this much. And that was the intent, and it kept failing. It failed two years in a row. I don't know if they ever got it through. So we used their plan. We, we, when we had the committee, we reviewed the plan, and that was sort of the concept that developed the inventory, right? Because we have to understand when stuff is gonna be need to be replaced. So we have time, we, and again, I haven't seen the, the spreadsheet in a while, but we have a- Yeah, you have the spreadsheet, I've seen it. By when it's, gonna do, when it's gonna fall off from an asset perspective and what the replacement cost was, so we have the year-over-year -year cost that we should be raising to put into the fund, right. but to your, I, I don't think our, pl I've seen the spreadsheet that um, Jason had prepared, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's changed that much. So it's really probably updating the cost of the equipment, flushing out any new things that have come up. Right. So, so it's good because you have to have them in order to collect the impact fees, right. but it's bad because we don't actually use it for what we should be. Yeah. And that's where distrust can come in. Because if you could go to the voter and ask for $150,000 a year to try to minimize some of these giant costs down the road, I mean, if they completely understood you can explain it right, they'd probably be like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But every once in a while, you'll have somebody else say, how do I know you're not gonna mismanage that fund? And that's where the doubt comes in. And that's where it screws everything up because then when we're going to buy a fire truck, we're going to spend six hundred or seven hundred thousand dollars now right. to buy a fire truck. Well, something with a fund like that, you know, you um, maybe that's one of those. If you, you know, it's going to be a substantial amount of money. You don't ask the voters to name the selectmen as agents to expend. So you start putting the money in there. It's a savings account. When it's time to purchase a new fire engine or plow yeah, truck, them to do it. you go on the warrant. Do you want to appropriate X amount from the fund? There'll be no mistrust because the, the voters will say yes, we'll take the money out or no. Yeah, I think the only challenge is, is that what happens when it happens in the middle of the I, year and we can't do the whole cycle, right? Right. 
I mean, we can always you have a special truck. a special meeting. Lease a truck and then pay it. Well, you shouldn't be buying a six hundred thousand no, dollars truck. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. In I'm August. just saying. I'm not, <laughs> on the it spur of the moment. It, it wasn't the six hundred thousand dollars truck I'm more concerned. I'm, I'm oh, more concerned you have about an the accident. Small dollars, things that could happen, you know. It, but that's happen. what the, that's why it's a capital improvement. It's supposed to be the big cost items. Well, it's supposed to be the scheduled cost items, too, right? Not necessarily the emergency. True. Stuff. True. So it's tough. I mean, a lot of towns are. Uh, You'll see a lot of towns just are just lease purchasing all their heavy heavy equipment, fire engines, backhoes, plow trucks, police cruisers. It's the same thing as putting money in the bank every year. Other than the, the you know obviously the obvious difference is that one year you can say no, and once you do a lease purchase, you're committed to making that payment. No. But it'll take you quite a few years to save up enough money to buy. You think about it. So in the Litchfield Hudson News, they you know Hudson just bought a brand new uh, engine. And it was five hundred eighty thousand dollars. grand, man. Okay. So how many years will it take you to just to save up enough money for one engine? What Six are you do about the two plow trucks, the, this and that, and this, you know? And that's why you see towns financing this stuff. Right. Well, we finance stuff too. We, we started getting into a battle about whether or not we actually can go into a finance contract without town meeting. Well, the bigger question comes now is, as the economy is getting better, the cost of goods is just mm -hmm. flying now. Interest rates are going to start going up again, and that's all of a sudden when it comes to fruition. If you had the money to buy it, it might be a lot better off than doing a lease purchase or anything like that because. You're paying interest then. And as the rates go up, cost goes up. Yeah, and you're, you're getting that vehicle now for today's price, not saving you money, yep. <laughs> paying the price five years, six years down the road. You, right, yeah. Nobody's giving you money for any interest on your money in the bank. No. <laughs> that, that has not moved. No. So, you kind of hope it would eventually, but. It's not moving. All right, anything else on that? Okay, that's it. Okay, so the next item in the business is a resignation acceptance. Regretfully, we have to accept the resignation of Russell Blanchett from the uh, Litchfield Cable Television Network. He was an engineer there, and um, I don't know. Anybody got anything on that? I, I, I think it is with regret. I mean, I've been working with Russell with Russ for the last several years from cable committee and he's always been sort of the go-to guy from a technical perspective and he helped create what's there today and he's always been able to step up and do the right thing and him departing is going to be a huge loss to the committee uh, so I don't think there's anything we can do to change his mind but it is it's going to be a, a, a missed, uh, missed resource from the group okay anything else We'll move on. Administrator report. Okay, just a couple things. Work continues on the Pilgrim Drive um, Chase Brook culvert. Uh, we, um, Jack was out there last week. We had Belmore uh, we trying to use the high pressure hose to see if we could clear some debris out of the two culverts. Um, they had some luck. Uh, we're able to get at least a good sized hole punched through, which was able to drain the water. Um, out of one side of the, uh, the row, but the water's still there, the beaver active. Um, so I think sometime this week, Jack is going to be trying to use uh, a piece of equipment, build a contraption to try to see if we can just get like a 20 foot, 30 foot steel pipe into the culvert and to see if we can try to ram through. It's not an easy uh, job. I was out there just to take a look at it and it's just, it's not something that departments deal with every day, and there's no contractors out there that specialize in this work, so it's it's tough. Jack had told me the Beaver <laughs> built overnight. They had cleared a portion of it, and the Beaver came back while they were gone. Mm -hmm. They the next day they they showed up again, and the Beaver had rebuilt this dam. Listen, if you if your house roof came off, you put it back on. <laughs> I know exactly. Yeah, yeah. you do something temporary. You put tarp <laughs> yeah. over or something. Yeah. Right? Can we just put dynamite? Go <laughs> <laughs> destroy the culvert, but uh, that would be nice. We've had problems beaver. with beavers down there before. Oh, it's yeah. I know that we've tried all kinds of things to keep them out of there. It just doesn't work out. 
Somebody told me they're protected. You can't shoot them. Really? Mm. You can. Who's going to report? Fish, fish and wildlife. Um, you you can hire a trapper that's licensed to do off season trapping. trapping. Oh, get rid of them for yeah, nuisance. Just, move them. Yeah. just moving them someplace. I know that you're not allowed to move them. Unless I, you're authorized, right? I didn't exactly. I didn't think that you weren't allowed to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you can't move them, you can't kill them. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a well, if you just kill them, no. and leave them there. That's not well, moving them. I, think they, I really think they. No are relocation right. program, but we can kill you. <laughs> the loophole. Well, the reason for it is because you can't put your problem on somebody else by moving it. <laughs> well, that's true. That would make sense, I guess. But then, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's a criminal act, but I am not sure. So I well, if it's actually completely dependent. Well, if, it's, if, it's depend, well, if you hear awesome. fireworks down there tonight, it might be me. <laughs> As I said, I don't know for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, last week we lost um, another um, condenser unit um, <laughs> outside here. So, actually, I'm confusing that. The condenser unit that we lost two weeks ago, we finally got the bill, $3,500. Another condenser um, broke. We thought maybe because it was the last of the older style, we thought that was, was nice breaking, again, but the it? mice got in there and ate some wires, and and two wires touched and blew up some components, and um, you know, the, the repair that guy was able it. to put a new thing on it, and everything's good. So the only reason I bring this up is the for right now, I'm just going to charge the $3,500 repairs to the general fund. We're going to monitor the budget throughout the year. Our, our goal is to charge it to the operating budget. I don't want to reach into the building facilities um, capital reserve fund. But we're, again, just going to hold it there and see where the operating budget goes. So in December, you know, if we're looking for some money, I might have to ask the board to reach into the uh, capital reserve fund. And I didn't put it down here as a bullet, but um, next week I am on vacation for one week. So starting a week from yesterday, just yeah. or today, so just before the uh, budget season starts. Yeah. yeah, why not? Might as well yeah. relax a little bit. And that's it. Okay. Um, selectman reports. Selectman Brunel. Uh, there's been no meetings on my side. Uh, some June, so report on my side. Planning board met. Uh, actually, can I interrupt one thing? Um, everyone's probably seen the news about the ransomware attacks in the public, right? So just be aware that we as a town have also had it happen to us mm -hmm. in a very small scale, and nothing was lost. We were able to, you know, we have backups and recovered, and there's nothing there. It's always been someone doing something. But it has forced me to invest in additional protection um, covered by my budget this year obviously will show us an increase next year but we have to do it it's becoming it's almost unstoppable sometimes because it's so simple to do and in some of these cases a user you know goes to a website clicks on a link and next me you know everything they own has been encrypted and they can't get it without paying four or five hundred dollars to get it back and even then you don't want to risk the chances of giving them that kind of you know money um, I've been personally involved in a lot of large companies that have been taken off the grid for weeks, and you probably saw it in the news, and I spent a lot of time there over the last couple of weeks. Huh. So it happens. You know, even the best protection can be perverted, but just, again, we, we have very basic stuff going on around here as far as protection. We've, we've ramped it up a little bit more just to be a little more protected, um, predominantly because of the police department and the cruises being in the public always around. So. So that's, I just want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Hmm. I've been up a few nights trying to recover a few things, but we're good. <laughs> we are good. It's no issue. It's just, just be aware of it. Okay. Um, planning board met last week and discussion. Uh, they're working on the master plan. So a little bit more progression. Wreck the basketball courts got paved. We painted them a couple Saturdays ago and... They're having the camps on them right now. So, awesome. yeah, the outdoor basketball court. Yep. Uh, that's, that's what's going on with that end of the world. Excellent. Uh, no items are removed from consent and uh, no other business. Next regular scheduled meeting is August 14th. If nobody has anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 
Motion moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstain. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Again, our next meeting is gonna be August 14th where Chairman Lemire will be back and present and uh, do